Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Zoe if you've not met me before and today I wanted to discuss my breastfeeding journey so far. Um, so if you're not interested in breastfeeding at all then this video is not for you but if you're interested then I hope you enjoy. It's basically just my personal story with David, he's my first baby, first time breastfeeding obviously so I just wanted to let you know like my experience, what's happened with us. So I wanted to start at the beginning, <laughs> when David was first born, he was feeding about every three hours at first and he basically just slept, ate and peed and pooped <laughs> basically while he was a newborn the first few days as well. The baby's tummy is tiny, it's about the size of a grape maybe and so he doesn't need a lot of milk but sometimes they feed, like cluster feeds, like need a little bit quite often kind of thing. Um, but I was quite lucky, like he would feed quite well and he latched on pretty easily, like it just was natural to him. Um, and I felt like it was natural to me as well because I think because my mum breastfed, my sister breastfed, I've been surrounded by it like for a long time. So I just thought it was the normal thing to do for me. And I think that's a good frame of mind to be in when you first start off rather than being anxious about it and thinking about it too much. Just kind of go with the flow and try your best and obviously it's not for everyone I'm not saying that it comes naturally to everyone but that's how it happened for me the first few days as well um, breast milk is like really concentrated it's called colostrum and that's all the antibodies and things that your baby needs as well so even if you can just breastfeed for the first few days that is very important for the baby and that sets them up in good stead for growing up you know and it gives them their antibodies and all the nutrients that they're needing so even if you can only manage that a few days that's still making a huge difference to your baby um day, day four or five i think it was my milk came in like properly and this was like the most painful part of breastfeeding basically my boobs just blew up like big balloons they were very tender and sore but the more you feed your baby the easier it gets and your boobs learn like all right he's only going to be feeding at this time so i'll just have milk in for that time kind of thing it's like your breasts have a brain <laughs> uh, so yeah and then day four or five i think it only lasted a few days i can't actually remember now so it couldn't have been that bad you know but i remember <laughs> the um was it the midwife yeah, the midwife told me to put, um, or the health visitor, I can't remember, they told me to put a uh, Savoy cabbage in the fridge and then put that over my breast just to like cool them down and that was really helpful. Also what you can do is put a bit of heat to them, like so I would wet a face cloth with just some nice warm water from the tap and just put that on them and that just helped to soothe them as well. Um, I've always done on demand feeding, so it's basically just when your baby wants to feed. And they will give you signs like they will start rooting around near your chest they will start um if someone else is holding them sometimes they'll start like suckling on their arm or something where they're holding them you're like right i think he's ready for a feed give him back to mama kind of thing um so yeah david just took to it so naturally like he's like i don't know how we done it babies are just like amazing like they were just so clever and he just let me know when he was needing fed <laughs> and it was there so that is Definitely the best way of feeding. I think rather than getting caught up with schedules and everything, although he he was up through the night and he still is a lot of the time, um, that is the best way for a baby. And apparently a baby can never overfeed. Like they'll never take too much. They just take what they need, and that's them. So I really enjoyed doing that. The on-demand feeding. Up to now, he's now eating. Obviously, started. I started weaning him at about six months. Um started on just on like pureed veg and um, just so we get used to the taste of veggies so he didn't have an aversion to anything <laughs> um but then his feeds are probably he probably has about four or five during the day when i'm here if i'm at work and like my parents are looking after him then he doesn't have any feeds at all so he will have um cow's milk now because he's over a year old um or he just has water with his meals or even diluting juice is fine so but when he's at home and i'm at home i think he takes advantage <laughs> definitely so he probably has about four or five feeds during the day and then through the night it could be two or three feeds he was sleeping through the night for a time 
but I don't know what's happened. I don't know if it's because we've been doing the house up and stuff, we're out of our normal routine with the lockdown and stuff. It's just like we've not been very strict with routines. That's maybe what's happened, but he's up two or three times through the night now for feeding. Um, so yeah, it's like he's reverted back to newborn <laughs> and he's about 13 months now, just over 13 months. So I don't know, maybe it's just a growth spurt and he's just needing that extra energy. Um, and I've been trying to feed him more throughout the day, like more food throughout the day so that uh, like I'm hoping that he's full and then he doesn't need to wake through the night, but he still wakes through the night. It doesn't matter what he eats through the day. So let me know if that's normal for <laughs> anyone else, but if that's what happened with me and David. He does tend to feed more as well, like if he's not feeling very well, like with his teeth or something, or if he's having a growth spot or say if he's got a little cold or something. Um, his teeth have been bothering him a bit recently, although it's calmed down a bit last maybe week or so. Um, so he will feed more often more just for comfort than for actual energy. Yeah, he's getting out about the cow's milk as well, I forgot to say, like, at first he wasn't very sure about it and he would just take a small amount, but he's now drinking like a full cup worth of cow's milk at a time. So I'm trying to get him into the routine of having cow's milk like just before bed, like at bedtime, and then I've tried him like mid-afternoon as well, he usually has a feed, so I tried them with cow's milk the other day and he drank a full cup and he was fine with that, so I'm hoping that's going to continue and he'll eventually be weaned off breastfeeding. I've already mentioned, like, I thought he would be feeding, like, less and less after he turned one, but he's actually feeding more and more now, <laughs> like he's reverted back to newborn, but I think it's just a phase he's going through and I'm not worried about it, like, I think I'd be more worried if he wasn't feeding enough, do you know what I mean? So I'm quite happy that he's eating more rather than less. Uh, with breastfeeding, I just wanted to mention as well, like I feel hungry a lot of the time, like most of the time. I've really struggled to lose weight um, while breastfeeding because it's not like a normal hunger. It's like, oh my God, I'm starving and I need to eat right now. <laughs> it's so bad, like I'm just like reach for the the naughtiest food, the chocolate or the crisps or something and I know I shouldn't, I should try like fruit and veggies first or lean meats, whatever, I should have healthy snacks ready but not everyone's that organised and yeah, I, d I don't really have an excuse to be honest, I should be eating healthier but I've just been naughty and just when you're breastfeeding you just feel super super hungry all the time. <laughs> um. I'm also thirsty all the time as well because obviously when he's feeding it's like taking fluids away from me so I'm having to drink water constantly which isn't a bother for me because I absolutely love water as I've mentioned before. <laughs> I always have a bottle of water with ice in it especially since we've got our new fridge which has an ice machine which is even better. It's just so easy you just pour it in. Perfect. Um, so yeah also I like to drink diluting juice I like green tea, I still have one coffee a day, I have one coffee in the morning before breakfast and I sometimes have Diet Coke as well which is probably not very good for the baby but <laughs> it's good for mama, <laughs> like I need it sometimes. Um, what else? Oh yeah, when you're exercising as well that like affects your breast milk, like I did try to do like this crash diet and I was exercising like every couple of days and it does affect your milk supply so just be aware of that it doesn't mean you can't exercise just just be aware and try and top up your fluids rehydrate yourself and make sure you're getting all the nutrients that you need um because otherwise your your breast milk may take a bit of a dip it's i think it's more like at the start when you're first starting to breastfeed that it would matter more but like because it's been over a year now that i've been breastfeeding like I know kind of what, what my body can handle now, um, so yeah, it's just more to be aware of what you're doing and that you might need to top up more from water or juice or whatever. Uh, <laughs> another point that I've got here is that uh, WHO recommends that you can breastfeed two years and even longer, up to two years old, um, well they, they recommend that. Um, but I think that's going to be a struggle for me because I'm absolutely like tired all the time, I'm knackered because he's up for the night all the time as well. Sometimes I just feel like feel so drained from it as well. 
like it's not all bonding and cuddling and loveliness like sometimes it can be quite hard it feels very draining on you um but there are more good days than bad I must say like I've not had that much struggle with it and if he is breastfeeding up to two years old then that's fine like I'm not gonna stop him but I just I hope that <laughs> I hope that he stops like before that because oh, I'm just tired of it <laughs> That's terrible, eh? I sound like a bad mum. But he's having cow's milk now, so like he's still getting the, the calcium and everything from milk. And he loves yogurts and cheese and everything too. Uh, another thing as well, he went through this stage of biting, which was horrendous. He actually bit one of my nipples really bad one time and I was really struggling to feed him. I actually went out and bought formula. This was before he was a year old. Um, but he just would not take the formula he, he didn't like it at all um i think he just knew <laughs> he's like that's not a boob <laughs> he's he's like so clever but he we did get through that stage and he does still bite occasionally but it's more just when he's not actually hungry he just went on the boob just to like play around and then what i do is i'll just say right if you're going to bite mummy you can't have any boobs so I'll put them down on the floor or in the corner or something and just ignore them for like 10 seconds <laughs> that's enough to like upset him basically not upset him but like make him realize all oh, right I shouldn't have done that um, and then he's usually fine after that so it is really hard when they start to bite you like I don't know if all babies do it but David has done it to me I think it's when he's teething as well he's just he's wanting to bite everything and obviously when he's breastfeeding that's the first thing that he wants to bite so but it was very very sore so I used a lot of a uh, nipple cream <laughs> and I got through it it was fine I, it actually only it healed after like a couple of days with the nipple cream and I had to keep feeding them because otherwise you know it, like I could feed him more on the other side but I was still trying to feed him on that side just to like make sure the milk was flowing through because you don't want blocked milk ducts or anything like that because I'm sure that would be even more painful than a bitten boob <laughs> Um, I want to mention as well that I've still been doing like a breastfeeding support group on zoom so like a uh, video call classes we've not actually been doing them for a while because of everything with school and lockdown and everything um, but we were doing it for quite a time uh, over last summer and into the autumn time and it was just really nice to have that support and just to have other people saying oh yeah my, my baby does that too kind of thing and just to sort of normalize the things that you're worrying about and you're like oh all right they do that too so it can't be that bad kind of thing um, and also just to ask questions if you're like curious about things like um, like how to increase your milk supply or yeah, it's just anything like when David was biting me as well I was really worried so I went to the breastfeeding support group and just asked like what can I do about this and it was actually my sister that gave me some advice and said like based on what I've just told you like it's obviously because they're not that hungry that they're doing it so you just have to like put them down for a bit, put the boob away <laughs> and it's basically their punishment is they're not getting boob if they're going to bite it kind of thing. Um, so yeah I've really enjoyed most of it. <laughs> like I say there's biting and there's been just days where I've been so just drained and tired and the hunger is mental but apart from that it is the most amazing thing that you can do for your baby in my opinion personally um yeah i just it's great for bonding you just sit and cuddle him especially when he's a little newborn you just sit and cuddle him in and he just sits and feeds on you and it's just lovely and i don't think you can beat that feeling of you're the sole like nutrition for your baby you know it's just it's just amazing and when you see them grow so fast I mean David's a big boy as well <laughs> when you see him grow up so fast and you're just like wow that is just from me that he's that he's thriving on that it's an amazing feeling so I've got a little list of just like um little tips if you will um so for your milk supply 
Um, I've found that eating oats or like porridge, um, that really helps. Um, barley water as well and also barley like in soups or something. Or I think you can make barley risotto as well. That's meant to be really good for your milk supply, although I've never actually made it. <laughs> but I do drink a lot of uh, barley water, like the, the fruit juice. Definitely drinking lots of water and staying hydrated is key. Um, other things are lean meat, apparently fennel as well, which I love anyway. Like I love fennel seeds and I love fennel, so it is really nice. And a ragu, like a bolognese. If you've never tried that, you need to try it. It's really good. Um, wheat and brown rice are also good for your milk supply, so even just like whole wheat bread and like uh, wheat, wheat, wheat mix kind of cereal kind of, <laughs> I couldn't say that really. <laughs> uh, dairy foods, um, obviously milk, cheese, yogurts, which I enjoy eating them anyway, so I'm quite happy with that. Um, and then I also take vitamins every day as well. I, I don't know if I mentioned that before. It's basically the Pregnacare ones, but they're specific ones for breastfeeding um, that you can take. So I've been taking them. I'm still taking them now. So I've been taking them over a year now. <laughs> and David has little vitamin drops as well that I give him every day. Well, I say every day. Sometimes I do forget. Bad mum, I know. Um, other things that might not increase your milk supply but they're good for a baby is I was advised to drink peppermint tea for his wind if he has windy pops. Um, David's always been pretty good with wind if I'm being honest. Like He's always good at um, letting go of his wind. <laughs> but um, I, I do drink the occasional peppermint tea just because I like the taste anyway um, and it's not going to do him any harm kind of thing you know. Um, also, especially when he was a newborn, I used to drink a chamomile tea every night before his like nighttime feed and that just helped him settle for the night and I've just started doing that again now recently. I kind of got out of the habit because me and Michael drink decaf tea anyway so I would just like drink a normal cup of decaf tea instead but I'm wanting to get back into my chamomile now so that just helps baby settle for the night. It just, I don't know, it's just like relaxes you doesn't it? Um, also lots of fruit and veg and just a healthy varied diet is good for your baby because obviously whatever you're taking in all the nutrients are going to them through breastfeeding so as well you need to remember to try and like make sure you're getting enough of these vitamins and minerals like all the different foods fruits and veggies meats dairy etc you know what a healthy diet looks like i'm sure um but because baby is taking all the good stuff out of you so you'll just be left with the crap <laughs> so make sure you get extra and just to like top yourself up so that you've got the energy to look after the baby you know um other things just to be aware of like not like don't ever do this but just like to be aware of and um, they recommend alcohol just one to two units once or twice a week so that could be like a bottle of beer or a small glass of wine I think and um, <clears throat> to be honest I've not really fancied alcohol since obviously before I got pregnant <laughs> um, so I've not really wanted to drink that much I've, I've had the occasional glass of wine um, or a bottle of beer like with dinner usually um, I think I've had like maybe some cider in the summer when it was hot weather <laughs> but I've just not really wanted it to be honest but if you do like to drink then obviously just be aware that the, that affects baby it does go through your milk and you have to leave it a certain amount of time so what I would say is like have if you're having a drink have it like just after babies had their last feed before they go to bed so then they're having like a long stretch of sleep before they need their next feed so you're getting like a lot of time in between for the alcohol to go out of your system again kind of thing um yeah that's what i would say <laughs> um also what is recommended is no more than two portions of oily fish per week 
which to be honest I probably don't have that much although over Christmas I, I, I was eating a lot of smoked salmon because I got this big huge pack of it and no one else in the house eats it so it was just me but I was having like one slice a day kind of thing with breakfast so but that's not every single week that I would be doing that <laughs> it was just a special occasion for Christmas um, and I do like tuna as well so sometimes I have like tuna mayo on a jacket potato or something for a meal but I don't think I go over the two usually. Um, caffeine as well. Um, I think it's, yeah, I've wrote, wrote it down here. Um, 200 milligrams a day is what is recommended. So I will usually have just one coffee a day and I have that in the morning, like as soon as I wake up. That's like my little morning routine, <laughs> if you will. Um, and then I'll usually have maybe one or two Diet Cokes, depending on how much energy I'm needing. Um, if I'm at work as well, I'll maybe have another coffee, but it'll be an instant coffee, so it's not got quite as much caffeine in. Um, and also, I won't be feeding David for a while when I've had that at work, because obviously I'm at work for the whole day. So I don't worry about it as much when I'm away at work. Um, and I also drink a lot of decaf tea and green tea and water and diluting, just like I've said. So I do like a drink. <laughs> I do like a hot drink, especially like green tea and coffee. Um, so yeah, um, I don't think I go over the 200 milligrams per day allowance very often and when I do it's usually when I'm at work or like I, I know that I'm not going to be feeding David for a while. Um, I think as well it would just, he would probably just get cranky and he wouldn't be able to get off to sleep as easily so it is worth it to limit the caffeine I would say. <laughs> Definitely if you want to get like a good night's sleep and you want your baby obviously to get a good night's sleep. So yeah. That is all my tips and tricks for you that I've written down. <laughs> if I think of any more, I will try and let you know. But let me know in the comments if there's anything that I've forgotten about or there's anything that you found really helpful when you've been breastfeeding because I find it really interesting as a subject, as you know. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm really glad that you watched my video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, please hit that like button, hit subscribe if you're new, and check me out on Instagram as well. It's Mama Zoe Vlog. Bye!